my friends and welcome to this playthrough of the Pro and Expert Division in the Football Fever Tournament. This video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and I'm going to show you here in all like all the nine holes in a row how to play them with various type of wins. Have in mind that we will have different wind in the tournament. Uh, so this is basically a, a playthrough in how to show you how to play the holes and like where to put your ball, etc, etc. I'm going to try to explain, of course, why I'm playing as I'm doing as well. So we're going to start off with hole number one. And this is a tough par four, especially if we would be finding ourselves with some headwind. Because the, the reason with headwind is like, you know, then you can't... Uh, be that perfect with hitting the ball over to the second fairway with tailwind then sure we can go with a more like um, aggressive line but now we just want to use the curl that we do have on our drive use the fairway combined with the side spin to the right bounce ourselves out to the right as you could see there from the start the fairway slopes a lot from right to left which means that we need to be very 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 accurate with our drive and try to put ourselves uh, as much to the right as possible the more left and combined with short then we're going to have a very very tough time to reach for the green too especially if we would be having headwind for our second shot as well and that is something that we can have in mind like because the wind in the tournament is the same so if we're having some kind of headwind or we're having sidewind right to left then we're going to have headwind for our second shot as well for our second shot here i do suggest you use a guardian if you do have one because the reason for that is that you uh, most likely want to go directly onto the green as you can see here even if we have a titan ball we are too short and we will have to overpower our shot and then i normally go with max backspin let the ball go to the top there to make it fall back down to give ourselves an easy birdie sure if you do not have the distance for the second shot you may pick the wrong club you may are even more uh, short than we are uh, for our drive then you can go on the right side try to curl it in combined with a little bit less backspin we use max backspin on our club we go uh, max over power to just land this one onto green as you can see it slopes down a little bit and we will in the end end off with an easy birdie putt and i would say like if we're not having really favorable wind for this part four we won't be seeing many eagles we will be seeing a lot of birdies though and uh, some pars but in the end there will not be that many eagles so you should be very very happy with a birdie uh, to browse through to the next round like not the next round to the next hole which is going to be hole number two but you can see here if you're not able to reach for the green in two then you should of course lay up and then this particular shot is very tough very tough to get in the hole uh, in the hole and most likely will just end up be a par we will see many people uh, getting uh, getting into the bunker or into the rough by the green because they try to play a very very close line that's why i'm using a guardian using the backspin give myself room to go to the back of the green to fall back down and again and uh, now we're going to go to hole number two and this is a hole we have been playing i think it's five or six tournaments uh, and uh, it's still one of the toughest holes that we do uh, play as a par three we do play downhill combined over the water which means that the ball will be affected more by the wind than normal we're going to with this type of wind we aim up a little bit to the right of the pin we want the last bounce to be uh, after the pin so not in front because we're bouncing uphill and then that fairway as we want to hit it slopes a little bit down to the left on the left side which means that we have first and foremost need to over adjust it and we're going to go with four and a half rings for this one. And four and a half rings uh, 
is going to be basically spot on when it comes to the adjustment we i would love to see a little bit more as you can see we go a little bit short combined with a little bit too much to the left so i would like to get a little bit more with our adjustment there but we end up nicely to get a birdie i do always when i play this hole with side when do counter for the side when with some side spin to the uh, yeah to the other direction so wind left to right <coughs> and then i go with side spin to the left wind right to left go with side spin to the right and uh, the thing that you want to manage here is that you want to have the ball uh, the ball's path in the air to be as straight as possible while hitting the fairway and that of course you can apply with curl against the wind but then you need to have in mind that if you curl against the wind then you will lose distance many of our uh, many of the players that is going to play the tournament will end up into the rough to the left because they forget to counter for the win they forget that on the left side it will be bounced onto the left and get into the rough or into the bunker but this is how we make a birdie on hole number two so it's time for hole number three hole number three a hole of the sakura hills uh, and we are going to have a headwind here for this tutorial of the hole and then you can see yeah, we're going to choose a kingmaker the reason we choose a kingmaker is that we want to reduce the wind as much, much as possible but we want to keep the distance and we're going to play left side I would say no 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 with going on the right side if you do have headwind uh, I would go with side wind or tailwind all day and every day go on the right side but with headwind we need to go on the left side uh, i do use max topspin here i don't use max overpower because i do believe that it's not necessary especially if you do have a lot of good tailwind on your drive and you just can slightly overpower to just be sure that you go pa uh, past the trees because if you put yourself behind the trees or in between the trees in the middle there or into the rough on the left you will have no chance for reaching the green in two and i would also say that if you're in uh, in between the trees then you most likely will not reach for the green in three if you're not lucky where the ball is placing itself because the trees are in play and that is very important to have in mind here you can see our opponent is using a basic ball and of course with a basic ball you need to overpower it more because you don't have any distance <coughs> and hitting great on the left side will of course not put yourself onto the fairway uh, without having the luck for it so now in the rough and with a basic ball will not be able to reach for the green too and i would say even with a kingmaker or with a titan or with a berserker you will not be able to reach for the green in two from that position so we are just checking here if we would be having the distance for it we would be going for the rough bump but now in the end we're going to go for the fairway bump so we're going to bump uh, uh, bump bounce over the water there and i'm with this type of wind when i'm going to be pushed a little bit out to the right and want to make sure that i will end up onto the green i kind of go uh, just going to go for four rings when it comes to my sniper i'm going to go a slight amount of curl i would like to go with a more aggressive line i need to go with slight amount of more backspin combined with a little bit more curl to the left but when the water is scary there in place it's just important to actually get this ball onto the green if you're putting yourself with your driver from on in that position right side another story then we're going for the pin all in every day and of course don't uh, does, don't misunderstand me we should always go for the pin if we have the opportunity for it but if we are not having the wind or the club for it just aim for going to the green in two give yourself that easy eagle so you can focus on the next hole and when you get back to this hole then you maybe can play it a bit differently when you do have your notes down for it so we uh, are going to put this one in for an eagle and another thing with the second shot there is that uh, the spin that you're using should be adjusted for the type of wind that you're having i know i talk about that before because if you're having headwind then you need to use less backspin because the ball will have a different bounce when it hits the fairway and with tailwind uh, a little bit more backspin because it hits the fairway a little bit different you know that already because i've talked about that before but 
Uh, the thing here when we have water is that we really need to be accurate with that. It's if we would be having like six, seven, eight, nine, ten miles per hour in headwind, then we can't use uh, four or five bars of backspin because then we will risk just stopping in the rough or into the bunker or even maybe going to the water if we are wrong with our wind adjustment. So uh, in that particular case, rather use an amount of uh, backspin that you will come in hot to the pin and may have to hit the pin to make it stop in the hole or at least give yourself an easy eagle there so my friends that was hole number three and we go through to hole number four another part five so we're going to play back to back uh, uh, par fives and here you can see we're jumping directly in and the reason I'm, uh, I'm jumping directly in the tutorial without the starting screen is that we're going to see two type of play for this hole. Our opponent's going to play up safe and I'm going to go for a more aggressive line and I think that is very valuable to show because depending on the wind these two uh, situations or these two uh, these two type of play is the way that's going to happen most of the time. I know it can be slightly changed, especially for the second shot, but in the end it's going to be very, very similar to how me and my opponent are playing here. So we are going to go with our extra mile, and extra mile of course is not the best driver out there, but we do have the top spin, and that's why we use the Kingmaker as well to reduce the wind, and also show that it is possible to reach over here with this type of wind. Um, uh, I would say like if you're not having an extra level 6 or uh, 6 plus when playing this one from the second tee, don't try to go over play up safe. We're using top spin, using max side spin, we're also using curl because if we're not using curl we can uh, can be unlucky enough to go into the rough onto the left there and that we don't want to because we want to at least give ourselves a really good opportunity for going for the albatross. So our opponent here is going to go with the big dog and of course the big dog from this position is may not be the best best play i would consider to go with uh, with a cataclysm maybe maybe with a guardian something like that or a high upgraded sniper and the thing that we want to do here is to use the fairway on the right bounce it in combined with the backspin side spin and uh, also a little bit of curl I would go with actually. Now our opponent hits it great. And as you can see here, the green works in the way that it slopes down to the left. And so the ball gets that push down towards the pin. If you play the layup play, as I would like to call it, then don't consider this one as an albatross hole. Consider it to just be an eagle hole because to make it albatross from that position that our opponent was doing it's going to be very very tough it's going to require a lot of skill and luck as well so important for the eagle there we are going to lay up in the rough i love this type of play where we're going to be a little bit wrong with our adjustment as we are over adjusting it a little bit but the thing that we want to do is to use two bars of top spin and to let the ball bounce into the rough up towards the pin. If we're having uh, a, a, like a massive headwind, I would say 8, 9, 10, 11, then maybe try to go directly onto the green with a long iron with a good amount of distance instead. Or, or you just need to hit just that edge that we did hit, but we did hit it great, so we go to the left side. Otherwise, this is a very, very good opportunity to make an albatross uh, on hole number four. So. My friends, two different ways to play hole number four, important to show, valuable to show, and depending on the wind, these are the type of play we're going to play, and I hope we will get some kind of like difficult but manageable wind so we can find ourselves with a rough bump for an albatross. So, we are basically halfway through, and we're going to go to hole number five, a part three. A part three that many 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 players do curse uh, towards because it's a very it's a tough one especially if you pick the wrong clubs and here you can see our opponent here is having the wrong club that's for sure because if you're playing this one from the second uh, or the 30 you will be playing with your wood club and if you're not going to go for the rough bump then you need to have a wood club with way more backspin and 
with this type of backspin, it's not going to be possible. It's going to go way long and it's going to put yourself in a situation where you need to have um, need to have a long putt for a birdie and that is not something that you do want. And when it comes to a par three, you always want to find one type of play that you actually can get close to on hole in one and maybe drop it if everything gets right. So you will see here for our shot, we're going to go with the Guardian and the Guardian is the club that I consider you to go with. If we're having headwind and you can go with a maxed sniper, but in the end, use the Guardian with the backspin that you do have to help yourself to get this ball to stop close to the pin at least so we're going to go on the platform there on the left as you can see yes they're on top and even if the ball guy line shows that we're going to come in too hot then it's going to stop because we're going to curl it against the wind and the backspin will really really kick it there so we go with five rings here five rings and we're going to uh, hit this ball in a perfect way and we're going to use as much curl as possible on our club and we're going to curl it in the wind which means that we lose some distance and that is what we want to do and as you can see with the kick there for the bounce combined with the backspin we're going to stay very very close to the pin and if we would be a little bit uh, more on top then we would be dropping that one for and holding one but in the end a safe birdie and that's what counts in the end Hole number six, we come to hole number six, which is a par four. And hole number six here is going to be interesting in, in two ways. It's like, first and foremost, do we get tailwind or headwind? Because it changed this hole's play magnificently. Because if you do have tailwind, then you can just basically play your drive, whatever, because you only only and only you need to go over the bunker there on to the left up to the fairway get as close as possible to the rough on top as uh, as possible can but with a the headwind then you have to overpower your shot you need to really be accurate because you need to let your ball bounce be, uh, besides the rough and the bunker and that is never going to be easy to do so so that's why it's going to be interesting to have a tailwind or a headwind so we are going to use a titan and the titan will help us to not letting us to use any top spin we are not having the necessary to use any any overpower and we're just going to let this this ball bounce past there as you can see on the side we're just going to line it up let it roll and give ourselves an opportunity with the sniper from distance and and here for the second shot is where it's going to be a little bit tricky because now we need to decide okay do we want to go with the aggressive line or do we want to go with a little bit more conservative line and depending on the wind is how again i say that so much but depending on the wind and uh, is how we're going to choose how we're going to play this hole if having straight tailwind more than five miles per hour or a straight headwind more than five miles per hour i would go with the more conservative play which is going on the left there using a long uh, using a wood club with a good amount of backspin to just bounce it up to the pin use the backspin to make the ball stop if you get the eagle you get the eagle be happy but if you get to the green stopping close giving yourself a birdie then you should be satisfied with that as well So our opponent here, going on the left, stopping on the fringe, will be an easy ship for the birdie. And that is, again, that is what counts. It's like the birdie is a par score, El birdie is a par score, but birdie is definitely a good score on this hole, especially with this type of wind. If we're going to play for the aggressive line, we're going to go into the rough, as you can see there. We're lining it up using two bars of a top spin, but with straight tailwind, I'm not going to do, go there, especially not with 7.1 in Tailwind. I would go there all day and every day if I would be having side, side wind because that will help me uh, to just, I will hit the rough nonetheless. I can be off with my adjustment, I can hit the rough, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to go conservative line, going to go with a lot more curl than our opponent, combined with backspin 
and side spin. As you can see, we're coming in a little bit too hot. That's why that's because I'm putting a little bit more room in my adjustment there. So I'm not going short or not risking curling myself into the rough or into the bunker if I do hit my hit my shot great on the right side. So okay, I'm a lot of talk now for hole number six, but I think the holes that we're going to play is going to be very interesting uh, when it com comes to the win. There, it's not every hole that will like okay headwind you can play it the same way as you're going to have tailwind doesn't really matter but these holes is going to be changed a lot and i do hope for some tricky wind especially on the par four so we really have to work for it to reach for the green in two uh, and if we hit ourselves into rough or into the bunker we shouldn't be able to reach for the green in two that is how it's supposed to be in my opinion so we're going to go directly after here to play hole number seven, which is a part three that has been featured one time in a tournament before. And it's a part three that looks very tricky, but actually would con I would consider be one of the easier ones that we're going to play in the tournament. And as you can see here, it looks very scary. And you uh, either going to go left, you're going to go right, or you're going to go in the middle. And I consider going on the right side be the best play uh, if you're having like straight tailwind or wind right to left. If you would be having uh, like wind left to right, then I would go on the right side because the wind will of course help you uh, because it's easier to play with the wind than against the wind. If you want to go with a very, very aggressive line, go in the middle there. But the risk that you put in there is that you can be a victim for the fringe glitch uh, and that is not something that you do want but at it I've been playing this hole so many times that it has been happening too many times for me to play that uh, that typical play and I know there is people that have may been making hole in ones on that particular play as well but in the end in a tournament I don't want for a second uh, myself to be in a situation where I can be risking getting some kind of a um, weird bounce on the fringe or something like that. We're going to go with four bars of backspin. We are going to actually change to not go with side spin to the left. We're going to go with side spin to the right. And why, Tommy, do you do that? The reason I do that is because of the bounce that we're going to have uh, to the left as we will be hitting a fairway that slopes from right down to the left. So we're already going to be pushed to the left. If we apply more side spin to the left, then we're going to have a problem in the way as we're going to be pushed even more to the left. We could, with Tailwind, use one bar more of backspin, and then we would be coming in a little bit closer. But in the end, we get up there, we get an easy birdie, and that is what counts for hole number seven. So, two more holes to go of this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division in the Football Fever Tournament. And we're going to play hole at number eight now. Another Santa Ventura, so like seven, eight, nine is Santa Ventura holes. Hole, uh, and this hole is going to be probably the hardest one, in my opinion. I remember many, many players had so much trouble for this one. and but we got saved in the last tournament we had this one with tailwind so we basically could play this one in a very aggressive way but now i wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of headwind or sidewind then we're going to be a different story you can play three ways with headwind i would say one way then you play and then you need to lay up it's going to be too tough in the way in the way to go for a maxed overpower drive and uh, then go to the left. You should consider to go straight up here using a Kingmaker or a Titan in my opinion so you do have some distance. Then you just need to get this one over the water on top. Uh, the problem here is of course if we do have headwind for our drive then we're going to have headwind for our second shot as well. And therefore it may can be wise to try to get just as close to the top as possible onto the right or we need to use a club that allows us to use a little bit more top spin 
and then go over to the right yeah even if we go short on the right doesn't really matter but the key is that we need to give ourselves some distance and i've been looking at this course so many times and like tailwind sidewind won't be a problem in the way uh, for us to play but headwind even if we have a, big, a good amount of topspin we're going to have a very very tough time if we put ourselves to the left because we're going to have like four or five six trees in our way to get the shot up to the green and that is going to be yeah it's going to be tough for no matter what type of player you are so but with this particular wind then i do choose to go and lay up short and as you can see here i'm mixing a little, a little bit with the wind sorry with the spin and to give myself the the best way to play this particular shot when we're having a little bit of a headwind here i don't want to stretch out to overpower my shot so i'm going to go with two bars of topspin going to bounce in the rough just by the green i'm going to adjust for four rings uh, and we are going to just let the ball do the work hit it perfect bounce it into the fairway bounce it up to the uh, rough onto the green and that shot is very very technical but in the way i'm trying to always find a situation or a spot where you can actually go for the eagle no matter what where you are on the on the course and in the end the thing that you should do if you're not 100 percent certain uh, like not i would say 99 percent certain on that you will be uh, able to hit the rough there and um, then you should be going with uh, with uh, another type of approach and another type of approach would be use one two bars of backspin go with uh, as a slight amount of overpower to just let the ball bounce onto the green directly and use the back of the green to let the ball fall back down and you will have an easy wedge for the birdie or at least an easy putt for the birdie because if you do like our opponent is doing then you will be in a big big problem because i remember actually there were many people that did play an opponent that did struggle as much as you yourself did so people may parse bogeys and whatever because people went into the water so sometimes it could be better to play it very very safe to just lock in the birdie especially if we do have some tricky wind uh, because headwind is going to be the tricky part i would just mention a little bit with tailwind with tailwind then you can choose <coughs> either you go for some kind of a trick shot with a berserker ball or something like that on the left or you you're using a regular type of drive try to go over to this second part of the fairway and if you haven't watched that before check out from i think it was the hollywood tournament if i'm not mistaken and when i played in masters i did go for this type of shot uh, to land basically with my ball here in this type of position uh, not in the rough though but on the fairway to give myself a wedge for an uh, for an eagle so my friends this was hole number eight very tough part for the hardest course that we're going to play in the tournament so we're going to go to hole number nine and hole number nine is going to be a tough one as well but it's not that tough that it looks but the reason i choose this type of tutorial after play this hole several times is that i want to show how important it is on this type of hole to choose the correct setup with the clubs we are going to check here for my care first and with an extra mile level five you will not be able to have much uh, curl you can you will not have much top spin as well so it's very very important for you to use a driver that gives you a good amount of curl i would say would be a very very good ability to have on your club so the thing that we are having here as you can see we're having an extra mile level six and i would say like i, I upgrade the quarterback level eight level nine level ten with a titan or a kingmaker could work perfectly because it allows you to get more curl combined with like four or five bars of topspin which will be enough to get you where you want to now when we are not having the curl that we do want 
then we just need to take away uh, some topspin. I would love to go with two, three, maybe four bars of topspin with this type of play. We're going to curl it around the trees, but as you can see, we're not having much curl whatsoever. Uh, but to not put myself into the rough on top, I need to take away some topspin because otherwise my first bounce with a topspin will push myself too much to, to the top. Sure, now we go too short. And here again, we're going to see uh, why it's important with the right uh, type of club. Because now we're playing uphill. The ball will not, will not be affected by the wind that much and no, as normal. But we have headwind. And we always need to count, account for or adjust for that we're going to have a uh, headwind when we play this hole. And if we're having headwind, then we need to pull out a big dog or a cataclysm that gives us two things. It gives us distance and it gives us curl. And those two uh, abilities is very important when it comes to this type of hole. And you're going to see why here. Because even though, even if we went short, because we lost distance, because we used the wrong driver, then from this position we should be, we could be able to reach for the green with a little bit more topspin, a little bit more curl, a little bit more distance if we would be using a big dog or a cataclysm instead. It's, that is so, I see so many players choosing the right, is choosing the wrong type of clubs but playing the hole completely right. Because that that is the, the, the fun part when it comes to tournament that Everything that you do when it comes to notes, picking the correct clubs, picking the correct balls, is something that will affect the type of score you will get in the tournament. Because you will see many players like having a struggle, you will see many players saying, oh, this was easy, because you can, uh, you can perform differently depending on how you practice or train for the tournament. And to win a tournament, it's not just to go out there, play, and uh, you will get the gold medal. P uh, players in this game is very, very good in all the divisions. And it requires uh, uh, like a 100% focus, uh, a 100% um, like a right decision in this particular uh, play that we're going to do. So very, very important to have that in mind because this is an important hole and I would see like you need to eagle this one. It doesn't really, I don't really have to say more than that with the result of this hole. And of course, going into the bunker or into the rough, uh, now we are in the bunker and we're going to ship this one in for an eagle. And sure, we're going to be happy with that but we could have played this one in a better way because we should be playing it in the exact same way as we did, but we should be having different clubs to do it with. So my friends, this was hole number nine and this was the full playthrough of the uh, Pro and Expert division of the Football Fever tournament. I say thank you for watching. Now I'm going to just mention that hole number one, two and four is Wineyard Acres. You can practice those on turn number seven hole number three five and six is secure health you can practice those on hole number uh, tour number eight and santa ventura uh, is seven eight and nine you can practice that one on hole uh, tour number seven if you do have any questions please pick up in the comment section below i will be happy to answer you there this video is sponsored by playdemic and golf clash and i want here in the end wish you the best of luck in the football fever tournament